as I assess all the big games this weekend, isn't this game more important to Notre Dame than any other game for any other team this weekend? No, I will say I think the Clemson game. You're disagreeing with me, Brian? I am. I'm sorry. <laughs> here's here's why I say that. I, I think it's a close second. I think if Notre Dame loses this game, it's a black eye for Marcus Freeman. But I believe the schedule sets up well for them to kind of get hot. They have a lot of get right games coming up. I look at Clemson and I and I look at the opportunity they have in front of them. You know, there's a lot of people that just kind of assume Dabo's time is done. You know, he's just he's not he's not going to win. He doesn't embrace the transfer portal. He doesn't do this. He doesn't do that. Blah 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 blah. Clemson's time is done. Okay, may very well be. If if Clemson loses that game, it's like, well, it's it's official. You know, put a fork in him. Fair or not, that's going to be the perception. If Clemson wins this game, then it's hey, we're back. If Notre Dame beats Texas A&M, the the mantra will not be Notre Dame is legit. They're real. It's going to be A&M's not that good. That that's just. Mark, you and I have been doing this a long time. That's going to be the storyline coming out of the SEC. If Clemson beats Georgia, it's like, holy crap. And, and there's going to be this perception of, okay, now you start getting into conversations of you've got the second or third best ACC team against the third or fourth best SEC team come playoff time. Well, hey, you know, Notre Dame went down and beat AM, but Clemson beat Georgia on a neutral field, ACC, and you know, all this other kind of stuff. Like I saw somebody say, this was a terrible weekend for the ACC. Why? Because Florida State lost. Um, didn't they lose to an ACC team? <laughs> like, like, you know. So that's why I think it, it, it's just nationally. I think it is bigger for Clemson because Notre Dame won't get the the type of immediate push that they that that Clemson would get if they can beat Georgia. And I think there's something to it too. Mark is like, look, this is the kind of game Clemson used to play really well and then win. And if they do want to be back. And once again, a title contender, I think they need a game like this because their schedule, you know, they got to still go to Tallahassee to play a game. And and so I don't know that a 10 and two Clemson team necessarily gets in unless they lose two in the regular season, play in the ACC title game and win that and they get the automatic bid. But if they're sitting there at the end of the year, 10 and two, and they're not in the ACC title game, I don't, I don't know that they're going to have the resume to be a playoff team because they don't get Miami. So they don't, they don't get that good win over a Miami team. They'd be Oh, and two against the two good teams you played. And, and I don't know that that gets them in. So I think that there's even more at stake for, in my opinion, Clemson than there is Notre Dame. I will say this, though. Notre Dame is a very close second. Very close second. Okay. So you don't disagree with me that much. No, okay. no. I mean, like, ba- well, barely. Well, and I think you can make a case for it being big for Notre Dame. I, and, and honestly, Mark, it's it's one of those things where for Notre Dame, I just don't know that they're that, that they a win will do as much for them from a national perception standpoint as it should, because it won't be about how good Notre Dame looked beating AM. It'll be about, you know, AM's not that good or whatever. And then if the AM wins a bunch of games, they'll look back and say, well, Notre Dame still won't get credit because, well, yeah, but that was a different team. That was game one. If they played him again, you know how this goes. You know, it, it's, we heard this crap in 2018 from Kirk Kirby. Well, yeah, I mean, I know Notre Dame beat Michigan, but Michigan should be in the playoff anyway because they're a better team now. I'm like, okay, so we're just going to pretend September didn't happen. That's kind of how it goes. That'll be how it'll go at the worldwide leader. Uh, it'll be spun that way. And so I just don't know if, if Notre Dame's going to get that level of respect. They're going to have to beat, for Notre Dame to truly get that respect, they're going to have to beat a big boy. They're going to have to beat Georgia. They're going to have to beat Ohio State. They're going to have to beat Bama. They're, that's just that's just fair or not. That's that's where the world is. And I don't know that AM moves the needle because honestly, Notre Dame's won games like this before. Maybe not as often as they should have, but they've won games like this before. Um, it's it's going to be the big boys that they do because otherwise they're just going to spin it into something something different. But it sounds like you do understand my angle on that. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. Because everybody else can go into their conferences and take care of business there. Right. Notre Dame only has so many opportunities this year, yeah. but you're right. AM has not been racking up 11 win seasons to <laughs> have that type of respect. They've yeah. had one 10 plus win season in the last 20 years. That was Johnny Manziel. That was Johnny Manziel's year. I, I, I was a little, I knew they didn't have a lot, but I was stunned that it was only the one because, and that's the thing is like, you know, Notre Dame doesn't win games like this. I'm like, yeah, they kind of do. <laughs> like, <laughs> this isn't Georgia, folks. This isn't Alabama. This isn't Ohio State. This is Texas. Now, in next year, I think the story could be different because I think the way that AM and going to play later in the year under Elko, the way he's going to recruit, the way he's going to hit the portal. I've said to people before, I'm, I'm 
maybe a little bit more concerned about the game in South Bend next year to start the season against AM than maybe I am a little bit this one because I, I do think Mike Elko is going to do some really good things there. I just, you know, the, the guy's not going to. I just think Notre Dame right now is the better team. And if you lose your, you know, your, the first game of your third season to a guy who's in game one of his tenure there, that's that's not a good sign. That's not a, that's not a good sign. All right, Brian. Since you didn't completely disagree with me, I guess we'll have you back next week. Thanks. You, Thanks. You, you made it for week two. Yes, the Thanks. audition passed. College football is even more exciting with some action on the line. And the games are even better when you're cashing in. And the Voice of College Football is the place to be to get the greatest value. Let's start with my picks. 75% against the money line, 58% against the spread. I've got a 40-year track record. In fact, in 2023, at $100 played per game, you would have netted over $9,300. And guess what? I'm just the warm-up act. Steve Merrill, our ace in the hole, show stopper from Wager Talk. Six years with the voice of college football, over 30 years in the industry. Steve gives us analysis on all the big games, but you can't miss Steve's weekly under the radar pick, which went 21 and 5 against the spread the last two seasons. I repeat, 21 and 5 against the spread. You also get picks from some of our top analysts here at the voice of college football, including Steve Dace and Matt Zemick. Become a YouTube channel member or Patreon member for just $99 per month. Go to the main channel on YouTube, click join and select the betting tier. Do the same thing on Patreon. Make 2024 a winner now.